Hi and welcome to this first English tutorial. In this video I want to show you our Insta 2K web interface for all 2K plus cameras. Also all upcoming 4K camera models will use this web interface. So first of all you will have a login screen once you have completed the there's a kind of uh, installation assistant in the beginning after you have installed your camera and once you completed that assistant you will come to the login there you log in with your username password um, in the assistant you will be prompted to um, give the camera a new password so usually the username stays so it will be admin and then your password which you have given to your camera once you logged in you will have a let's say clean web interface you will see the live video here and you can stop the live video at any time in my case i will pause it for now and uh, here on the right side you will have we call it widgets so you can activate audio um, you can show the video in full screen act um, activate or deactivate the alarm and here there's a question mark if once you click on that one you will have several options to customize this uh, widget area. So all you have to do is select the widget that you want to use. Those are like, let's say, fast actions. For example, you want to switch the relay inside the camera. Um, then you can just simply drag and drop that and exchange it with one of the existing ones. Once you apply, you will see here on the right side, it will change to the relay. and here you also have the option to select between um, the web UI showing in dark mode or light mode. Um, you can set this to automatic so it will be changing according to the to the time of the day. And here you can also select to activate showing the digital zoom controls inside the web UI. Those are by default deactivated. I will also keep it deactivated. Otherwise, in each um, in each kind of window, you will have this question mark at the bottom. This leads you to an online help, and there we explain the different options you have in this menu and what you can do and what each um, setting means or does. So we close this. So here we have the widgets on top you have a search option that means you can search our insta wiki which you can also open in a different tab if you want it's wiki.insta.com and there you can type in anything you want to search for let's say we want to search for how to integrate the camera into synology then you have different options to select and once you select it you'll be forwarded to the wiki page where it will be described how to in this case integrate the camera to Synology NAS. So once up here on the left side we have the settings this is actually the let's say main uh, area that you need in the web interface because here you do all the settings for your camera uh, another option would be SD card. This is an SD card viewer. I'll open it shortly. You see here the days um, that are available or where there is recordings available. Once you click on it, you have a folder either record or images. Image is currently not activated in the camera. Um, if we go on record, we will have the different recordings here. Once you click on it, it will start playing in the web browser. We can close this and, and shot another short option is up here. If you click that one, then you will be forwarded to, let's say, an, not like an, a different view of the SD card, um, the direct um, SD card view where you can select the files, download them. Um, so this is just another option instead of the SD card viewer that we have built in into the web interface. 
So in order to not make the video too long, I just shortly go through with you through all the settings. We have network settings. You can do IP configuration, give your camera a fixed IP address or use DHCP. You can upload a TLS certificate. By default, we are using a wildcard certificate for the DDNS address. If you are choosing to use your own DDNS address to access the camera from externally, then you can upload your certificate here. Um, there's another certificate store, for example, that you might need when you want to use uh, Wi-Fi Enterprise solution. Um, WPA2 or WPA3 Enterprise, then you might also have to upload a certificate here. Um, then we have the Wi-Fi menu for all cameras that have Wi-Fi. Here we have two options. We have the normal infra infrastructure client mode where your camera connects to a normal Wi-Fi network to your router, let's say, and you just search for the Wi-Fi network. Then you select it and then you type in the credentials on the right side. In our case, we uh, have both integrated WPA2, WPA3, or you can also use uh, Wi-Fi Enterprise solution with WPA2 or WPA3. Depending on what you're using, you will have to either type in username and password for Enterprise, or you just have to type in um, the password if you're having a normal, let's say, personal uh, router at home. Another option the camera offers is ad hoc. With the latest firmware, that means you can do a direct connection to the camera. The camera, therefore, will act as a router and um, you can connect your smartphone or laptop directly to the camera without having to have another router. This is if in case you want to use the camera on a, let's say, construction site or somewhere remote um, where there's no router available. Otherwise, you will usually use the client mode where the camera connects to your normal router and then is available within the network. Then we have remote access. There you will get the information on how to access the camera remotely. There's two options. One is called P2P. You just simply have to scan the code with our free smartphone app InstaVision and then you can connect to the camera without having to do any port forwarding or any settings inside the router. Uh, this connection is the easiest to set up, but it's also a little bit slower than if you would do a direct port forwarding with your router. Um, so this would be the other option. It's called DDNS, um, where you have a fixed address through which you can reach, let's say, your router. Um, if your router has a public IPv4 address, and then with that address, you once you do the port forwarding on the router, you will be forwarded to the camera. I will not open this menu now because it will show our address here for this camera, and um, therefore I don't have to unpixel it, let's say. Uh, then we have OnFIF. OnFIF is by default uh, activated. It uses port 8080. You can integrate the camera to any kind of application using OnFIF uh, Profile T or in future also Profile S. And uh, for example, if you want to add the camera to Synology or QNAP NAS, then you can simply do that. And the next one is RTSP. It's activated by default. You can change the port if you like or deactivate RTSP. And that's for network. Then we go to multimedia. You have the option to activate audio. Um, you can activate the internal microphone. You can activate the internal speaker if your camera has one. And we also have active noise reduction, which is like a filter to filter out background noises. And the other one is echo cancellation. If you're using the two-way audio with our app, for example, then this will filter out um, yeah, the, the noise that would come from the speaker of the phone, for example, back into the microphone and uh, therefore prevents the echo. So then we close this one. We have the video settings. We You can set the video uh, 
each video stream, the camera has three video streams. One is 2K+, plus, which is 1440p. The other one is 1080p, which is full HD. The other one is 720p. And for each one, you can do customize settings. You can set the video codec from H.265 to H.264, depending on what you need. And you can also set the bit rate, frame rate, uh, and so on. You can down here select which stream should be shown here inside the web interface. Um, here we have to mention that H.264 is not supported by all web browsers. For example, Firefox currently doesn't support H.265. Therefore, by default, we are using H.264 stream in full HD resolution. But if you have a web browser that supports H.265, such as Safari, Microsoft Edge or Chrome, then you can also choose the full resolution here. Um, next, we have the image settings. You can do a lot of settings uh, here. You, we have presets on top. We have different day and night settings. So currently what you see is the day settings. You can change them here. And also at advanced, you will have a lot of options such as white dynamic range, flickering, um, black level, and so on. And if you want to change the night settings, you can either wait until it's night mode or you can already click here to switch it and do the night settings. But for sure, it's easier you wait until it's actually night time in order to change those settings. And to see the web, uh, to see the live stream in the background more clear, you have this option here on top. So it's like a, let's say, picture in picture. You can click it and then you can move the window here to the side or any side that you like. And then you can see the live stream in the background and do the changes here accordingly. Once you're finished, you click on apply and then close the window on top. We have video overlays. Here you can set the camera name. You can say on where in the live video you want to have it shown, either on the left side, right side, top at the bottom. You can change that according to your needs. Also the timestamp on top, you can change it as you like. Then we have the privacy settings here. We have a privacy mask. We have four er uh, eight areas in general. So we let's say we can activate one and then mark some area here in the picture that we want to hide. For example, we don't want to see the door and then could apply that and then the door will be cut out of the video. This will be in the live video, it will be in all recordings. So everywhere you everywhere where you see the video or an image, it will be disappeared from there. So let's say you have a neighbor that doesn't want you to film his area, and then you can simply blind it out there. Then we have features, we have email settings here you can set um, that the camera, like we have SMTP settings, you can select where the camera should send um, an alarm email to, or even a photo series email. You can change the subject here. And then we have FTP settings. The camera does support FTP, FTPS, and also SFTP. So depending on your server, you can do the settings here, and then the camera can upload videos on alarm or images. Then we have the night vision settings. We can set the ILED control. We can set the IR cut. Usually it's set to automatic. So the light sensor on the camera will determine what mode to choose. And uh, down here we have the current light value of the light sensor. And then we can set here the, um, yeah, the, the time or the value on which the camera should switch into night mode or switch back into day mode. You also have the option to have the PIR trigger the night vision. So by default, night vision could be deactivated the whole time. And then once the PIR detects something, night vision will turn on and the recording will start. So this is optional what you want to choose here. And then we go into the pan tilt menu. This only applies for cameras that do have like pan tilt remote control. Um, you can set here different settings regarding the pan tilt. And then we have PDZ tour. You can set a tour. You can set different um, 
yeah, different positions where the camera should stay and how long it should stay in that position until it continues to the next one. Then we have the SD card, just an overview on how much space we have left. You can set, um, usually it's set to, once the SD card is full, it will delete the oldest day or date automatically. Each day will have a folder on the SD card. So once the SD card is full, the oldest day, oldest folder will be deleted automatically. And um, if you need to specify it, for example, in the U, how long the recordings should be staying on the SD card until they are deleted, you can also do so here and then say, for example, maximum 10 days. So everything older than 10 days will be deleted from the SD card. You can also format the SD card here or uh, open in the, as I've shown you all the way in the beginning, the SD card view here. So we're closing this one. We have the status LED. There's a blue and a red LED. Those can be turned off if they're not needed. Um, the only time we will turn this back on uh, will be either if you press the reset button or if you are using HomeKit. Um, then by default HomeKit will activate the LEDs and light them up according to the HomeKit standard. So this is just something to keep in mind. But even in the Home app from HomeKit, you can also deactivate the LEDs. Then we have the alarm settings. You can go to actions, you can enable the alarm, you can activate the PAR sensor, link it with different areas. Um, use the alarm input. We have a noise detection, sound detection. You can um, use different sensitivity levels. You have the object detection where you can link people, vehicles or animals and trigger the alarm if needed. Then you can select if you want to save recordings to SD card, transfer them by FTP or SFTP, upload them into the optional cloud. It, the cloud is totally optional on a, um, for all our cameras, so there's no need to use it. You can even use the camera totally local, just with the IP address. You don't even have to use it over the internet. And um, yeah, you can do all kinds of different settings here. Set the relay uh, if you have an alarm output, uh, how long it should stay, how long um, until the relay switches back. Um, you have even more options here to set the amount of pictures that should be sent by email or uh, uploaded to SD card or FTP. And you can also change the interval in which those should be sent once an alarm is detected. Then we have different areas. Uh, we have four areas in general. You can change them, you can draw them into the picture. So for example, here we can set where in the image we want to use uh, motion detection. For example, we want to use it once someone goes through that door. We can mark the door here. Um, let's say we deactivate those other areas. So now we have only the red area over our door and then we can set the sensitivity level. Um, but for this settings, we will do a different video. Otherwise, this video will become way too long. So those, this is what we can do here. We have object detection. We can determine on how big or how small an object has to be in order to be detected. This we can do for people, vehicles, and animals. We have a scheduler, so you can say when you want to have um, alarm, like when you want to use motion detection. And you can also have different settings for day and night for the alarm areas. So let's say you have two areas you want to watch, uh, like you want a surveillance during the day, then you can do that here and then change another two areas during the night. And last but not least, we have the push message here. So here we can set that we want to receive push messages and we can set the cool down time by default at 60 seconds. But if, for example, you want to receive a push message to your phone every three seconds, once a motion is detected, then you can do that here and set it accordingly. Next, we have tasks. We can set a photo series here. Photo series can be sent to SD card, email, or FTP server. In the FTP server, you can also choose to either have a new file each time, like for example, every 120 seconds, if you want to do a photo series, 
or if you want to integrate a photo into a website, you can choose that the file name should stay the same. And then, for example, we have snapshot. The file name will, call, will be called snapshot.jpg, and it will be overwritten each 120 seconds. So the, once you have it integrated to your website, then the website will always show the latest picture. This can also be done by scheduler. You can set the scheduler here. So for example, if you have a construction site and you only want to do pictures during the day, not at night, then you can do that here and you do the settings and then it will be uploaded according to your needs. Next, we have recordings here. You can do permanent recording if you like. You can activate it here. You can set the time up to 15 minutes per uh, video file. And then once once the video file is done, the next video will start. Uh, you can set also a scheduler for that and you can select the resolution that you want to use for that. Next, we have system settings. We have an overview of our camera. We can see the network settings here and also downloads. We can download the user manual and also go to the wiki page here. We have a user management. This will change very soon with an upcoming firmware so that you can customize each user what kind of right he has. Currently, we have three presets. One is admin level, one is operator level, and one is guest level. You can add more users here or edit those users. And um, I will show you that in a second. So let's say we want to edit our account. Oh, then we go to my account. Then we have to log in. And here we can set our language for the user. We can say um, the session time. Like once you log in, how off, how frequently you should be asked for the password again. By default, it's set to one day, but you can even set one year. So usually if you don't delete your cookies for one year, you will not need to log in again to your camera. And you can change the password here, change the username. You can set an email address. You can also activate two-factor authentication. Um, this is currently done by email, so you need to input an email here. Once you activate two-factor authentication, then the camera will send you an email after logging in with a code, and then you have to input that code. In future, we will also integrate an authenticator app um, so you can use an app to generate that code and type it in. But currently it's done by email. And then there's a security question that you can set in case you want to reset the password. So first you have to set it here and then later you can, it can be used to reset the password. Next we have the web UI menu. This is what I showed you all the way in the beginning. Here you can customize your widgets and you can select if you want to use the dark mode, light mode, uh, or automatic and also you can activate the digital zoom control. We have a date, date time settings. Our cameras support NTP but also NTPS which is like a secure NTP um, server. You can activate that here and then you can select here from a list of servers that should be used for the for making sure that the time is always correct on your camera. Then we have the language settings. We have uh, multiple languages here that you can select from to show the web UI in the language of your needs. System locks we have here. Um, the camera will show you all kind of locks and then you have different options here on top. You can select that this lock should be saved to SD card instead of the internal memory. So even after a restart, it will be available still. You can download the lock, you can sort the lock, you can refresh the lock, delete it, or we close it again. Then we have firmware update. By default, we offer online updates. So if an update is available, you will have this button showing in blue, and it will also show you up here that there's a new update available. You just simply have to click update and that's it. Upload update will be done online and um, downloaded. Another option would be that you have this offline um, section here so you can also choose to make the update with a file the latest file can always be downloaded here and then can be uploaded to your camera and so you can update the camera up here if you click here you will find a change log so you can see at any time what has been added to the firmware uh, before 
and if there's a new update available, once you click change log, it will show you what the new update will have, like what kind of new features, and then you can decide if you want to do the update or not. Next, we have backup and restore. Here you have the possibility to backup all your settings in the camera and then upload them later after you maybe have reset the camera. And we have system reboot. That should be very easy and clear. You can either reboot the camera directly. You can do a planned reboot either every day or once a week, for example. And then you can set the time when the camera should reboot. We can do a factory reset. The factory reset, we allow two different options. One is that you keep all your network settings, which is very good if you have, for example, the camera set uh, to Wi-Fi. Then you can do the reset. The camera will keep the Wi-Fi settings. And once the reset is done, uh, it will reconnect back to the Wi-Fi. And so you only have to do the network set, uh, not the network, but all the alarm settings again. And the other option is that you have a full reset where also the network um, settings will be deleted. Another option here is our optional cloud. The, if you are using it, like you, you can find the in introduction page here. Um, the cloud will offer you to store all the recordings in one area. You can also have uh, license plate detection in the cloud. You can have um, face detection in the cloud. So different AI options. It starts like there's a basic account where there's no recordings. Um, that one's for free. You can use it for Alexa skill or IFTTT, smart home integration. Then there's a 10 gigabyte um, account, which is five euro a month. Or there's a 50 gigabyte version, which costs yearly 130 euros by year and then that one offers you all the features that the cloud has to offer but remember this is all optional so you don't have to use the cloud the cameras can store all the recordings on the sd card it can upload them to ftp server so this is pure optional you can check it out uh, it's a very nice platform it will allow you easily to watch all your recordings so have a look and if you like it you can use it then we have a smart home section which allows you to integrate the camera into your smart home uh, first off we have alarm server the alarm server allows you to send an http request or https request to another server which in most cases can be a smart home and uh, you can input the address that you want to send it to uh, you can also add the triggers so we can add um, inside what we are sending to the server we will add what caused the alarm for example if motion detection caused it if a person was detected um, so all these kind of things you can add and uh, send to the alarm server and then the alarm server or smart home can do something with that information in total we have three alarm servers that you can set and uh, we have Alexa that would need the uh, cloud account because Alexa can only communicate with, um, yeah, let's say a cloud account cannot communicate directly with the camera. Older devices could, but newer ones cannot. So there you can activate Alexa, Google Home, same thing if you want to use that. Then we have Apple HomeKit. Here you can activate Apple HomeKit. Once you uh, activate it, you will have a QR code here and then simply add the camera to your home app. The camera currently supports HomeKit and also HomeKit Secure Video. So it can upload the uh, recordings to your iCloud and then you can show them on your home app. For this, uh, we will also make a separate video on how to integrate the camera into your home app. In general, if you have any um, if you need any information or you w want us to add videos on how to integrate the camera into whatever system, just let us know in the comments and then we will try to uh, add, add it as soon as possible or add a video how and where we show how to explain, uh, where we explain how to do that. Here we have the option to use IFTTT. This we will also need a cloud platform. And then last but not least, we have MQTT which also allows you to add the camera into uh, any smart home. 
the advantage of MQTT is that you will have a live, um, yeah, you will see directly if some value has changed. For example, if I change some, if I deactivate the alarm in the web UI or activate it, your smart home will right away show the same. So you don't have to ask for the information first, uh, but you will get the information, let's say, pushed by the broker in, smart, in MQTT. It's a different topic, so I will not go further into it, but um, the camera supports MQTT version 5 and uh, also supports WebSocket connections for MQTT. And last but not least, we have the Insta section. Here you have a contact form. You can write an email directly to us from your camera. You have the link to the online shop. Um, we have an Insta Moments page where every once in a while we have customers um, participate in some kind of um, yeah, up, upload um, and then you can win something. We have the knowledge base, which is the wiki that I described earlier. You can simply click this link. We have a customer form. It's mainly in German, but it also offers an English section. So you can write there if you have any questions. Um, here you can go to the installation page um, that offers you any kind of installation um, advices. And then we have our YouTube channel. Those links can also be found here at the bottom, including a Facebook link for our Facebook group. So this is it for the web UI. Um, this video got longer than I expected, and but I hope it was helpful. It was hopefully helpful to give you an overview of what the camera can do. We also have a free app for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows, um, which is called InstaVision, and that one allows you to add the camera, use the main functions, but for doing all the settings, we mainly do the settings here in the web interface because putting all those settings into the web uh, into the app might overload it. Uh, therefore, it's easier to keep them in the web interface and use the app for daily purposes. So please let us know if you in the comments if you want us to make any further videos on any kind of the settings, and we will try our best to add them as soon as possible. I wish you a lot of fun with your Insta camera. Have, if you have any questions, let us know. And otherwise, have a nice day and enjoy your camera. Bye-bye.